of my experience at MSMS. Uh, I didn't want to go. I decided I wasn't going, and my parents were, at the beginning of the summer, they were like, oh yes, that's fine. And then of course, they did the logical thing and said, no, it's not, it's not fine. You should go and give it a chance. And I said, okay, I'm only going two weeks, and then I'll, I'll leave. And two weeks later, I think that it would have taken an army to remove me. I said, I'm staying here. I, I love this place. I, I think to answer that question, I must first define what things are the same. And what things are the same is that the, the stress that students feel, you know, oh, is it test time already? I can't believe that we've blown through all of this. The teachers, we experience that same thing. Oh my goodness, is it test time already? I really need to make sure that this is up to date, that there aren't any typos and stuff like that. Uh, but on the other hand, I remember distinctly my time here being one where I don't know what's going on, I haven't learned this before, I've never had to push myself this much to learn something, and I didn't know how to get from point A to point B. How do you go from not knowing what you're talking about to having an idea of what's going on? And of course now I'm on the other side of that. And now, despite remembering the struggle, the process is one that you, know, you have to think, really think about and define. How did I do that before? And how do I help people who are doing it again go through that same process and get to where I am now? And it can be tricky because once you know how to do something because you've done it a lot, it's easy. Oh, you just see the trick. It's, it's just a trick identity or something like that. And uh, I think that that's a very interesting and exciting part of teaching, but it's also the big challenge. It's very different from being the student and just doing the process. Definitely. Uh, what I think is really interesting is that while MSMS student-wise kind of has like a two or three year memory, after which time no one who is involved in the creation of whatever the thing is, is there anymore, and they don't know anybody who was there. Uh, but despite that limitation, it does seem like, you know, while the people are always different and unique, the, the groups are always very similar, so I, I can identify people who it's like, oh, these friends are very similar to these friends that I had, like, in terms of their dynamic and how they interact with each other. Certainly, they're not the same, but th there are some things that I think are really interesting in their similarity. After I graduated from MSMS, I went to Mississippi State University and took a little trip down what different things I might want to learn and finally settled on physics. And so then I got my bachelor's in physics. And after that, I served as an AmeriCorps VISTA for a year in Crenshaw, Mississippi. And then I moved to Scotland. Almost very similar to MSMS with slightly more freedom in the sense that I didn't have to tell anybody if I was leaving, I could just leave. But uh, I, I imposed study hours upon myself. Uh, it made sure that I would get things done, even with the temptation to not do it. Uh, and MSMS gave me that tool. Uh, you know, sit down and do it anyway. And uh, but also, after my imposed study hours were over, you know, I could hang out with friends and uh, we'd, we'd go walk around campus and talk about things. Absolutely. Uh, when I came to MSMS, I wanted to be an animator and draw things. And my big plan was that I was going to, you know, fight my way and work for Pixar or something. And I, while I was here, I think I was still in denial. Uh, about the fact that I really liked math. I loved all my math classes. I took every math that I was qualified to take except for statistics, which I think was a new course when I started. And, uh, but still, I thought, I don't like math, or I don't like science, or rather, by the end of it, I thought, I do like it, but I'd rather do this animating stuff. I took a college course over the summer in animation and discovered that drawing for other people was a lot less exciting than drawing for myself and was faced with the new crisis of what do I do and I think that's how I fell into physics what do I do well I like math and if you study physics it's like math but you can apply it and so which is also true for math but I didn't know that at the time so I do really like solving problems and sitting down and thinking how do I look at this in a way that is different 
so that I can solve this problem. Because a lot of times you look at a problem and you can't solve it because you've got this one way of thinking about how it should be modeled or something and then that can't be done. And I really enjoyed the, the challenge of basically learning how to look at something and think, I, am I thinking about it wrong? Am I incorrect? And if so, what can I change to make it a simpler problem to deal with? So after I graduated from university, I worked as an AmeriCorps VISTA and an elementary school. And I think the elementary school no longer exists. Uh, but while I was there, our, our, my, my job was to kind of build programs and things that the students could go to. So like we had a spelling bee and we partnered with people in the Mississippi Delta so that the students could learn some Chinese, which was really neat to organize. And that experience gave me a lot of like leadership and how do you interact with people, which was good. And after that, I, I kind of wanted to apply that. After physics, I thought I had learned so much stuff, but I couldn't assist anybody with my knowledge. It was just stuff that I knew. And uh, that's what motivated me to be at VISTA. And then I wanted to apply that you know, more directly into my field. And so I looked for programs around the world that were in engineering, like renewables. And the University of Edinburgh has a very good program in renewable energy, so I signed up and went there. I was looking for work in Scotland because I loved it and I wanted to stay. And I got an email from Ms. Brown and she said, hey, we, we need a, a long-term sub for a few months. And you know, we, we heard that you were in the market for work and we'd love to, you know, work something out. And I couldn't resist. Duty calls, okay, I'll come back. Just for a few months though, you know, not for too long. Which of course is why I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think it's really interesting being here and working with many of the same teachers who taught me when I was here. Because, first off, you, know, you sit in on a faculty meeting, and as a student you kind of guess what faculty meetings might be like and to get to sit in on one and see that I was mostly right <laughs> kind of how that would go I thought was really interesting I was really to see all of the hard work that went into what seems so simple when you're on the student side you know the, the lecture uh, and the grading and stuff seems like the hard part when you're learning but you know, so much work goes into just creating one of those lectures, or so much work goes into one of those tests, and we all communicate about, you know, struggles and how do we help people overcome those things. And I think that's really, really fun to see, because you, you think back and you think, these same conversations were being had when I was here, and possibly about me, I don't know, and I haven't asked. <laughs> but, uh, and I think that's really, really neat. It shows that we really care. I teach the calculus-based physics class, and I also teach astrophysics and two sections of AP1. And in the spring, I will also teach electronics in the place of astrophysics. And the Cal-based class is mechanics in the fall, and will be electromagnetism in the spring, which is my area of expertise. So I'm very much looking forward to that. I am definitely interested to see the science carnival because I was not part of it last year because I was I came afterwards and I don't think that they had it when I was here or if they did they didn't have it in the same sort of capacity as it is now and so I'm, I'm looking forward very much to seeing how that works and the, the operation. It's really awesome to be able to be on the other side of things and you know, especially I think because I was a student here and I remember the struggle and what I had to learn, what I had to do to go from being, to be quite honest, not that great of a student in terms of my studying habits and my work ethic, into somebody who could sit down and read a bunch of books for a long time and still be able to continue to do that the next day and stuff. And I think it's really, really fun to work with people and help them go through that same process. Like how do you go from, you know, not knowing where to start 
or not knowing what to look for into going to a place where you say, you look at the problem and you say, oh, I, I know how to do something like this. First, I want to start this sort of situation, then I do this. And I don't just mean physics problems, like how do you deal with a research paper? Or how can you read a paper and decide whether or not that paper is telling you the whole truth or not the whole truth? So it's very, very fun to be able to work with people and teach them how to 